Hi there and uh, welcome to the webinar uh, walkthrough for version 17. I'm James Leckie. I'm the product owner at Schoolbox and I'm going to be walking you through the latest update to Schoolbox today. Um, so as usual, let's start off by having a look at the changes that have been made within the admin system. Uh, we'll walk through those first and then we'll go through some of the uh, changes in the rest of the system. So just getting started, I'm going to move into the LMS system. Uh, the first feature I want to highlight here is ePortfolio deployment. This feature was actually added in version 16.5 during a point release, uh, but it's important, I think, to showcase this feature, uh, even though it's probably already available on your system. Uh, this feature allows you to send ePortfolios to a large um, group of users. So you could send an ePortfolio to page to your whole Year 7 cohort, for example. So if you, all you need to do is first set up that page on your own ePortfolio and then you can search for it and um, send that out to your target users. Um, so that tool allows you to actually deploy ePortfolio pages on bulk out to lots of students. Okay, next up I'm going to showcase the terminology feature. The terminology feature uh, now allows, this functionality has actually been in Schoolbox for a while now, but we've never really exposed it through the admin system before. So now you've got complete control over the terminology that we utilize in Schoolbox. So it lets you set the terms that you want uh, for your system. You can set up any particular terminology that you want um, and configure that how you want for your system. Obviously at Schoolbox we want the system to feel like your system. So if you have a different word for due work or grades, you can re-customize that or um, and set it up how you want specifically for your environment. Looking here uh, at just quickly how this works, uh, the term assessment obviously has both a singular form and a plural form, assessment and assessments. It also has a thing here called indefinite article. This is whether you should, we should use an an or an a before the term. So some terms obviously um, require indefinite articles and others don't, so that just controls that. Finally, the capitalization uh, lets us know whether in cases where we are capitalizing the term, um, whether that's allowed. Um, say for example, ePortfolio, where you don't want the E capitalized, you could turn that on um, so that the E doesn't become capitalized. Uh, so that gives you control over that capitalization when we're using it as a, as a um, label or in a heading. Okay, so let's now move on to another feature that actually came out in 16.5. Um, but once again, I think it's important because it came out during 16.5 that we talk about this feature. Feature allows us to subscribe to the calendars in your SIS. So obviously many of you know we have a real-time connector to your SIS database and we are able to get a large amount of data from that real-time connector into Schoolbox. The latest uh, extension of that connector is the new ability to subscribe to calendars from your SIS. Um, currently this is only set up to work with synergetic SISs. So in that regard, what this will do is if you turn on the event synchronization for the external database, it will display staff scheduled events in the teacher and students calendars. So if you have a staff scheduled event like a music lesson or a coaching class or some other thing that is going on that's not necessarily in the timetable but you have uh, a teacher scheduled to take it um, and a student is also involved, that event will turn up on both their calendars so that they can see those in the, their calendar. Um, so we're bringing all that data in. We do intend to extend that as well, that's going to have TAS support soon as well so we will be extending that uh, to have TAS as well in the near future. Let's move on now. Um, next feature up is the media queue. The media queue, uh, a lot of you have had um, some issues with videos every now and then um, and there's not a lot you can do about it. They just seem to not work. Um, so we wanted to give you some insight into why potentially those videos have failed. So this new media queue tab will give you some insight into what videos are currently being processed and any videos that may have failed. From here you're able to pull up the reason they've failed uh, and have a look at exactly what went 
went on during the transcoding process um, and there might be clues to why that failed in there during that transcoding process. Perhaps it was a, poor, a bad codec or uh, corrupted. Um, you may find that out through that log. If you can't see any good reason, it just seems to have timed out, you can of course just click restart processing and that will allow you to uh, restart that process and resend that to um, your uh, the video processor and actually have that re-queued up. Now this should only be used really if it's timing out, obviously if it's failed it's probably not going to work again, but if it's just timed out um, it might be worth trying again uh, at a quieter time when there's less load on the server and it's more likely to succeed. Next up, uh, this feature is kind of hidden, it's under lists and in lists we have a new tab called WebDAV. Now this allows us to configure uh, the WebDAV uh, controls for your uh, or the network drives that your school box will connect to. So if you're utilising the drives tab up here, it allows you to configure the drives that you will um, have connected through that tab. It can be configured here with a base URI, a path to the drive, so this will be your HTTPS URL here. Um, so that would be your web dev uh, server URL with a HTTPS included and then a path. User prefix may be the domain name, so for example mggs forward slash, um, then the username suffix would be something like um, username at domain.com.au. So depending on whether you use uh, domain style usernames or whether you use uh, email style usernames, you can append those suffixes to make it work with the web dev server that you're utilising. And then of course you've got complete control over who can access those drives. So you can set up here the access rights um, and only the drives that people have access to will show up in their drives tab. So if you want to create a staff only um, drive you can do that. If you want to create a drive just for senior school you can do that as well. Um, so that's all controllable through there. I should also mention in the path that there is the ability to um, use tokens, um, so for graduation year, um, year level, um, all of those types of things that you might have put in your home drives um, to group your home drives together, um, they are often um, found in the tokens so you can set up any token pass you need for your particular home drive access. Okay, let's uh, move on now. Um, while we're in the lists area, you'll notice that um, we have work types here. This used to be called submission types, we've now renamed it work types and primarily that's because it has moved from being attached to the um, due work and only being attached to due work. Now you can actually use work type on any, ass any assessment or activity. Um, so whether it's a task, quiz or due work, um, you're able to select the work type and that'll make more sense a bit later on when we're talking about filters um, because it'll allow you to filter across all of the assessments on these types. Um, so that's why we've made that change. Um, I should also mention now that um, We've added a new configuration setting for users which will allow you to remove the um, grades uh, uh, graph against where you're comparing students against the rest of the class. So if you rem remember on the student's grades card, we have a graph here that shows um, box and whiskers with dots on it. Um, and many schools have said they like this feature but they only want it on for certain year levels or they only want it on for certain students uh, and turned off for others. So if you want it on for senior school but off for junior school, previously it was all an all or none setting so you could only have this graph on or off. Now now we've made this uh, controllable uh, on a per user basis. So in the admin system um, I can look up um, Jana Reed and I can actually turn that graph off um, for that particular user. Display graph on student grade card, that will then turn off for that particular user and so when I return to the grades card um, that uh, graph will no longer be there. I actually have to log out and log back in again for that to work, um, but that graph won't be there anymore for that student. Okay, so let's move on now. Um, let's go on to, what have we got next? Uh, let's move on to some of the pastoral changes that we've made within the system. 
So in the admin system, uh, you have partial types, partial subtypes, all of those were already there, but there's two changes here. Now there's a partial documentation classifications. And the way this works is that it allows you to align the documents that are uploaded into Schoolbox's partial system with the classifications of those documents when they get uploaded into Synergetic. So this is really specific for the Synergetic um, synchronization process and it will allow you to classify documents um, by their type. So when you select a particular type, you can say what document classification um, will be utilised when we upload those documents into DocMan into Synergetic. Um, also on partial uh, record severity, um, we have the ability here to show um, certain severities on the partial dashboard and we'll come to that um, a bit later on during this walkthrough about what that partial dashboard actually looks like. But here in the admin system you can control um, which particular severities appear on that dashboard. So you can have these all turned off if you don't want anything appearing on the partial dashboard, um, but you can also turn it on here as well. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up uh, the admin system. Let's move now into the LMS and some of the changes we've made, made within the LMS system. So I'm going to start by logging in as a teacher. Now, as a teacher, in 16.5, we added this new assessments button. Now, this area here could be quite busy and could have quite a lot of information on it. And scrolling through, you can see here I've got a lot of assessments underway um, and not a lot of really clarity about what's going on here. Um, so what we've done is we added a new filters area at the top here, which will allow you to filter it to specific requirements. So if I want to filter it to just the weighted assessments, um, so I'm only seeing the really important ones, I can apply that filtering and there we go, we now see it just the weighted assessments. If I only wanted to see um, of a certain type, say assessment tasks, um, and I only wanted to see things in uh, Year 9 English, I can apply that filter and now I can see just those assessment tasks in Year 9 English. If I want to remove a setting, I can press the close button here and reapply and it will be refiltered back to just assessment types. And of course, I can remove that and go all the way back again. I should note that um, these filter settings will be saved across um, visits. So if I set assessment task here as a filter setting and then I go away to another page and then come back, that filter setting that I chose before is still in play. So it will remember the filters, um, not just from visiting the page and coming back again, but also if I log out and log back in again, it will still remember my settings. Now, of course, if you ever want to get back to the settings that you had originally, you can always click Reset to Defaults, Apply Filters, and it'll be back to the defaults um, as per the, when we started. So you've always got that ability to go back. But do note that it will remember those settings, so it can always, um, it can be confusing to users that they may have applied settings and they forgot, um, and when they come back, it's, it's not the same as what they thought it was. Okay, so let's... Um, move on now. Um, one of the other areas that also has a lot of assessments on it is the Markbook. And so I'm accessing the Markbook here through the Classes button. I go to a Markbook um, for Year 9 English. And here it brings up quite a um, busy Markbook with lots of things on it, lots of activities and quite long, lots of scrolling there to find what I'm looking for. But using the filters, once again, I can uh, filter that just, for example, to do work um, that is currently open um, and or perhaps overdue or closed, apply those filters, and now I'm only seeing the work that is currently uh, active in due work. I can remove any filters I want or return to defaults. I should note here that you can actually um, set across multiple classes. So you can actually build a markbook that shows all of the classes. Uh, and that's something that we think that we probably will utilize later down the track. At the moment, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, if I put Year 9 English and Year 9 French together in one markbook, um, it's just going to create a massive big list of things that don't make much sense together. 
You can do it, of course, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. But where we do think it might make a lot of sense is, for example, if you wanted to bring together the whole cohort, um, a whole um, faculty, for example, you might want that. So that's something we think we might use in the future to provide you um, bigger math books with um, different perspectives on the data. Okay, so let's move now on to the next area um, and that's going to be from a student's perspective and I'm going to look up a student here. Uh, I'm actually going to use Jana Reed, and I'm going to go down into her grades card here and on Jana's grades card I can see that she's currently getting A for English um, and I can see that um, I can actually filter these assessments as well. Um, so from here I can filter it, I can reset it to defaults and see everything or I can filter it to just specific tasks, uh, perhaps just the major assessments that have been weighted and just see the core assessments that have been weighted. So the filters really give you the power to sort of control um, what you see as a user on these pages. But we also thought, well, it's great for the user to have this control, but sometimes the school wants to define what they think people should see as a default. Uh, so in the admin system, we've added a new filtering control uh, tab. And so in the filters tab, we click here, you'll see that you have each of your pages, pending assessment grades and mark book where we've added the filters. And from here, you're able to control what filters are available. So if you want to turn certain filter settings on or off or control whether users can select them or not and also define the defaults. So for example, if I only wanted, um, uh, for example, to make parents see uh, weighted tasks and students to only see weighted tasks, I can configure that like so. And if I want to remove the ability for users to control whether they can see um, unweighted or weighted, I can turn that option off. And so now the user can't configure it, they're just going to see the weighted assessments and that's all they'll ever see. If I don't want someone to control or filter on this at all, I can turn the filter off entirely and so that option won't be available to users at all. They won't be able to actually control the weighting options. So using these filters, you can customise what filters are available, you can customise what filters users can control, you can also customise what options they have within the filter, and finally you can configure the default options for each role type that are set automatically when they visit that page. So lots of custom customization there, but very powerful. It will allow you to control and configure the page to show exactly what you want it to show, when you want it to show it, and also allow people the, the flexibility to show more if they want to or show less if they want to. So a very powerful feature, the new filters. That about sums up my filters discussion and I think we'll now move on to the date picker. So when we are logging back in now as a teacher and I'm going to go to my demo class page to demonstrate probably where the new date picker is at its uh, I guess at its best. We have added this new date picker throughout the entire system. So you will find the date picker in the calendar, when you're booking resources, uh, when you're you know, creating tasks, anything like that in the system, um, you will find this new date picker. Today I'm going to demonstrate it using Create Due Work. What I'm going to do is create some homework for um, the next week and I'm just going to leave all these settings. But when I get down to the due date, one of the important things that I need to know when setting a due date is how much work my students have on and if there are any other things that might collide with that event. And right now, it's not much here to tell me. But with the new date picker, focused under this select date box, I click on select date and it pops up this modal. And from this modal, I now see a calendar picker. But on this calendar picker is a little heat map that indicates that on day 8, on day 13, on day 16, that student has a lot of work on already. If I click on day 16, on the 16th here, I'm actually able to see that Jana Reed has three pieces of work set already. And if I want to see exactly what that work is, I can drill down into the student's work lists and see exactly what work the students have set. So I can actually see 
what work the student has on and make a decision. Is it okay to set more work on that day? Or should I perhaps pick one of these days that's a bit lighter? And so if I pick, say, the 22nd, is that okay? I can now see on the calendar that we have Year 7 camp on that day. Is that going to be a problem for me setting the date? So I can see the whole school calendar as well. So it's not just about whether the students have due work on that date, but also I can see what other events might be on on that day that could potentially impact on their ability to complete that work. I also know that many teachers don't think in dates. They think by the timetable. And so we also added up the top here the ability to select by timetable. So I've been demonstrating this by date here, but we could just as easily demonstrate it using the, calendar, the timetable as well. So we have the ability to select which timetable you're looking at, what term you're looking into, and then of course what week you want in that particular term. Selecting that day brings up the information for that particular day or week in the timetable. And then finally, we can select what period and what time during that period. So we've got all the information depending on whether you think by timetable or whether you think by date. It doesn't matter. The new date picker will help you find the right time, place for you to create this event, set up this due work, uh, whatever it might be that you're undertaking. The date picker has all of those all the information you need to select the right date uh, for your uh, work. Okay, so let's move on and let's go on now to the new plagiarism report. So with this uh, latest update, version 17, we've updated the plagiarism report within Schoolbox. And that plagiarism report, um, as you know, is um, based on a third-party system called PlagScan and they have updated their API and we're now using the latest API uh, to um, integrate with the system. And I'm just going to go and find a piece of work that a student has submitted. And in here, in this assessment here, we have a student who submitted on time. We'll go and view, grade that submission. And underneath that submission, I can see that this student has 95.8% plagiarised. So let's drill down into this new report and have a look at it. So it's just the same to access it as previously. Nothing's changed there. But the new report now um, looks like this. And from here, we can see the percentage uh, copied. We're also able to see um, some information such as the ability to print. Uh, we can download. Um, and we can also view. From here we can see all the sources that um, have been uh, plagiarised from. So we can pull them up and have a look at any of the sources that might have been plagiarised from. You'll note here that we can also filter to the top three, just to internet sources. And additionally, if the student has copied from another student in the school, another option up here will come from organisational sources. So any other documents in your organisation that may have been plagiarised from. Uh, and to make that uh, process of identification easy, um, you'll find that the title of the student and the student's ID is in the title of that document, um, so you can easily identify who the other student was copied from. Okay. So let's move on now. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces in here. Uh, one of them you now can obviously download as PDF and as a Word document. And of course, there, there's the print option as well for if you wanted to print this out. Um, so lots of new features available here in these. All these buttons will now work, unlike in the old system. Um, you'll be able to quickly move through all of these. Okay. All right, so. Moving on to the final area for today's walkthrough, I'm going to show you the new updates to the pastoral system. Now, with the new pastoral system, I've now added uh, into my top navigation here a pastoral link, and this pastoral link is going to take me to the new pastoral dashboard. The new pastoral dashboard is just located at slash pastoral, obviously, um, and any uh, teacher uh, is able to access this pastoral dashboard. The dashboard, though, contains a few um, new features that um, you haven't seen before. So let's just walk you through each of those new features and how we got all this information turning up on our uh, dashboard. 
Firstly, at the top, there's a quick search feature that allows us to search for records. Um, I can type in a term and search for any um, records. I can also search for students um, as well and find any students that match um, with that particular search string. Up in the top right hand corner you'll find two buttons. The first one is the pastoral report builder. This already existed but we've extended this functionality. And the second one is the manage pastoral groups. I'm going to start with the new pastoral report builder. So the pastoral book report builder existed previously, but now we've added the ability to save your reports. So when you go to build a report, you can actually save that report and continue to reuse it time and time again. So here's a report, Year 9 Bullying, that I've produced earlier. I can modify that report. It has a name. I can select whether I show this report on the dashboard. I can obviously filter it all. All the options are there for how I want that report to be created. And then finally, right at the very bottom, I've got the ability to share my report. So I can actually share this report with um, other groups of uh, users in the pastoral system. So here I've shared this report with the Year 9 pastoral team. So you're able to create a report, share it with other users so that they can then benefit from that report as well. On this uh, reports list here of where we maintain all your reports, you'll notice that there's a little star here. This indicates whether this report will show on your dash dashboard or not. So you can tick that on and off to show and hide um, these reports from your dashboard. Next up, going back to the dashboard, we're going to have a quick look at how to manage pastoral groups. So in pastoral groups, we have the ability to um, create new groups and add members to them. So here I have the um, Year 9 pastoral team. I'm just going to modify this group here and I can add new members. Let's invite Alison into this group. And I just save those changes and now Alison will be a member as well. So I can add and remove people from these groups. But the nice thing about these groups is that once you've created them, they stay in the system and they control visibility. So you can assign visibility to certain records to these groups and control who can see things based on these groups. I should note um, that the ability to manage groups and create new groups is only available to pastoral moderators. So you must be a pastoral moderator to have access to this functionality. I should also note that do not assume that just because you're a super user, you have pastoral man management uh, or moderation access. If you're a super user, you will need to grant yourself uh, pastoral moderation access as well because they are considered separate um, access rights. Um, super users do not automatically get access into the pastoral care system. Um, so just be aware of that, that they are separated. Okay, so let's go all the way now back to the dashboard. And so now I've talked you through how we got to the quick report links. So those reports um, that we created and saved, you can see that these have been shared with different groups. And you can also see that uh, I have my group memberships here, my wellbeing group, my um, year nine partial team. Um, they're all being um, shared as well. They're the groups that I'm part of on this dashboard as well. Uh, in here we have my recently viewed um, students, we have Sasha White, um, any students that I've recently looked at will appear here just as quick links so that I can quickly access them, and important records. These are records of um, information that uh, I have uh, recently accessed um, so that you can, um, well, well important because I've marked them with the highest severity, so, sorry. Um, so those have the high severity um, that we turned on in the um, admin system before. So anything with that high level of severity, they can turn up on the dashboard as well. And this is really to help, um, say, your high level users um, be, made aware, be made more aware of critical issues in the system. Okay, so that sort of summarises um, 
the new dashboard. But let's just go quickly look at an actual record. So this is the updated um, partial record screen. A um, couple of new features on this screen. Firstly, we now have a revision history. This revision history shows you the history of any changes. Uh, only partial moderators can see the revision history, um, but um, we just want to include an audit log there so you can see any changes that have occurred to that particular assessment. Um, next up, we have um, comments, they were always there, and now we have record visibility, so you can see um, which groups this record has been sh shared with as well. Also, when I'm modifying this record, um, much the same as it previously was, but now there's the new partial groups as one of the visibility options. So when you create a, a group, you can tick on the visibility and control um, that visibility around that group as well. Um, so here I could tick on Year 7 Teachers, for example. What that will do is notify all those members of that group that that partial event has been added uh, and send them a notification um, and they will then be then they'll be able to access this record as well. You'll note that there's one less setting here. We used to have a private setting available here. Uh, we have removed that just because it, it added an extra layer of complexity around visibility and it was difficult to, uh, I guess, understand what was going on with private records versus uh, the visibility controls here. Um, so in order to simplify this, uh, we did remove the private um, flag, but we replaced it with the group's uh, control. So you will get much greater um, flexibility over visibility of records, so you can set up specific groups at different levels to control visibility um, down at that level, um, which seems to meet with the requirements that most schools have um, are better anyway. Okay. Um, that about sums up everything for my walkthrough today. Um, I hope that that covers most of the functionality that's added into um, Schoolbox. Obviously, as always, um, go read our release notes. We have specific release notes uh, for both for admins and for teachers. Um, and anything you should know and last minute changes, of course, will be updated in those release notes. But thanks for watching the webinar and the walkthrough today. Um, and I'll see you all soon.